If you are seeking creative ways to expand your brand awareness, especially if your traditional ways of positioning your brand have been affected by the 2020 pandemic, then today's episode of the Love the Work You Do podcast is for you. Hey there, it's Erica Kastner. I'm super stoked you're here for another episode of the Love the Work You Do podcast. And today's episode, you're gonna hear from three innovative leaders who have leveraged podcast books and their centers of influence to open up more doors to expand their brands respectively. As you will hear in their stories, Tracy Hazard, Nisha Pai, and Andy Diamond are all going to share the lessons they've learned to generate more brand awareness, even during uncertain times, how to stand out from the crowd, even in a saturated industry, and how to make the most out of their marketing and advertising dollars to create more impact with their brands. Now, some of the points that we're gonna cover in today's episode, number one, we're gonna talk about how to create more awareness that actually translates into more business. I mean, who doesn't want to learn those tips, right? We're also gonna talk about why it's important to develop the future leaders in your respective professions. So stop thinking about, well, I can't collaborate with other people that are in my industry. Uh Uh-uh, nope, we've gotta take the time to help lift and rise people within our industries. That's going to help us succeed in the long run. And we're also gonna wrap up the show today with uh, um, actually a couple more things. We're gonna talk about how to leverage volunteer opportunities or pro bono work to generate more publicity for your brand. And then we will wrap this up with Tracy, Nisha, and Andy sharing their favorite resources on what's currently moving the needle for them personally and professionally. So with that said, I want to remind you that if you miss anything from the episode today, we're going to talk about a lot of different things, share a lot of resources, head on over to the show notes page over at ericacastner.com forward slash 35. That's ericacastner.com forward slash 35, just the number 35. And that's where you'll be able to access all the resources, read up on uh, Tracy and Nisha and Andy, and before I get into the actual interview, maybe it'd be helpful if I shared a little bit about each one of our panelists. So first up, we have Tracy Hazard, and she is an authority magazine columnist, a former Inc. columnist, and a host of five top-ranked podcasts, including The Binge Factor and Feed Your Brand. She's also one of CIO's top 26 entrepreneur podcasts. She is the founder of poditize.com, if I can say that correctly. And of course, I'm gonna have the link to where you can find Tracy's information on the show notes. But Poditize is the largest podcasting production company in the US, and as a content, product, and influence strategist, for networks, corporations, marketing agencies, entrepreneurs, publications, speakers, and so on, Tracy influences and casts branded content with $2 billion worth of product innovation around the world. This woman knows her stuff as it relates to really positioning your brand on air. Super, super excited she's here today. Next up on deck, we have my friend Nisha Pai, and she's the founder of Pai CPA LLC in Charlotte, North Carolina. She began her career within the world-renowned accounting firm Arthur Anderson, and then later within multiple privately held Fortune 500 companies as a business consultant, relationship facilitator, and account analysis. She realized that she had a passion for the small businesses and entrepreneurial sector, and so she started her own firm in 2011. Nisha has continued to nourish her own passion and the business growth of the Queen City by creating Pi Networking Group in 2017. And she also launched her own podcasting series, Piece of the Pie, that focuses on allowing successful Charlotte entrepreneurs share their stories and their business insights. She recently published a book, Overcoming Ordinary Obstacles, which chronicles the journey of being a first generation Indian woman born and raised in the South. Nisha herself has been a Charlotte resident for over 25 years. And apart from growing her empire, she enjoys fitness, art, traveling, food, and being fashion forward. I can attest to being fashion forward. She is a woman that knows how to mix a print, a girl after my own heart. (laughs) All right, and next up, last but not least, we have my newest friend, Andy Diamond. 
and she is a custom portrait photographer based out of Tampa, Florida. Her goal is to help her clients feel empowered and confident and beautiful through their boudoir photography sessions, personal branding style shoots, and family portraits. Andy bleeds orange and blue and is married to Pete for 18 years. Together they have two children, Ethan and Emery, and you're gonna absolutely love some of the things that she's bringing to the conversation today because she's been able to take some tragic moments from 2020 and turn them into beautiful moments uh, for, of transformation and lasting impressions for uh, not only her clients to see, but for the rest of the world to experience. So we've got a full packed show today. We've got some powerhouse leaders who are going to bring us the goods as it relates to helping us expand your brand awareness more creatively and more confidently. So with that said, let's dive on in to today's episode. Tracy, Nisha, Andy, oh my goodness, thank you so much for being a part of this awesome show today. I'm super jazzed that we're going to be able to share with our audience ways to expand their brand awareness. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Excited. Yeah. So as our audience heard in my pre-chat before bringing the three of you into this conversation today, uh, we have uh, the, our panelists that are guiding us through this conversation is going to, they, they are a wealth of knowledge as it relates to really helping you establish creative ways to position your brand from a place of strength and doing it in a, in a way that is going to serve you. And so what I want you to think about today is we're, there's going to be a lot of ideas that'll come up in this conversation today. Don't feel like you have to own every single one of these ideas. Take one and apply it to your world and then figure out ways that perhaps on down the road, you can incorporate some other things along the way. So with that said, I'm gonna steer our conversation uh, to our first panelist and that's Tracy. So Tracy, my first question for you, my friend is, how does podcasting create more awareness that can actually translate into more business? Well, you know, the thing about build, business building and brand building, right, in general, is that we all want, we need to increase our trust factor, right? We need to get people to trust us. And the faster we get them to trust us, the more likely they are to do business with us. So how can we do that in a way? Well, one of the best ways to do that is to be in their ear, right? When they're in, that voice in their head that says, oh, you know, you might want to try this, and this is an interesting way to think about things, and this is a new viewpoint on the world. All of a sudden, we're, we're, we're planting these ideas in their head, and for that, that translates right back into them thinking, hmm, maybe I want to do business here. But the best part about it is that in doing podcasting or anything that you do consistently and constantly, so something where you show up week after week, so whether it's a Facebook live stream, a YouTube, Instagram, uh, to Instagram TV, anything like that. It doesn't matter what that is, but as long as you're showing up week after week, you're showing consistency. And consistency is something that everyone looks for when you want to build trust, right? They want to know that you're going to show up for them and you're going to do the job that you say you're going to do. And so it's just a, a, a bit of a characteristic of, of building trust. But the most important thing to trust building is showing care. So if I give very fully of my information, of all the uh, things that I can share, all the topics of my network, of all the different things that I, I can give to you. And I do that so freely through something like a podcast or video cast live stream. Then what I'm doing is I'm sharing that I care about you and your growth. And that is the biggest factor to building trust quickly. So those things I talk about care, consistency, and then capability, because you're demonstrating some skill in that process. Those three things are the trust builders. And that's really why podcasting is really working for people. Yeah, for sure. And I think there's a lot of professionals that might be listening to this today and thinking, but gosh, Tracy, why would I even give away all my best stuff? <laughs> You're telling me to give away my best stuff on a podcast. Are you crazy? And honestly, you know, here's the thing. And I, I bet Tracy would have a thought to share on this as well. With you sharing some of your best content, the, the beautiful part is that not everybody can retain your content in the way that you deliver it, 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 you know, in the scope of how you deliver it. So if you're showing up and adding value and you're giving the juicy details of what it is about the thing that you do, 
people are willing to pay for an organized way to learn that process or to uh, have you do the thing that they need your help with. So, um, so being willing to show up and provide that value and doing it in a way that's going to provide excellence and care is going to demonstrate that trust factor faster than anything else. So I appreciate you sharing that. Absolutely, Erica, you're right on on that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and I know you're going to have some other uh, juicy nuggets to share with our audience today, and I'm excited and looking forward to diving into the conversation deeper with you. And my next question is for Nisha. So It's interesting that um, I love that uh, you are definitely a woman that puts herself out there in terms of uh, your podcast and your book and with your accounting firm. I mean, I generally don't see a lot of accountants doing the things that you do to position your (laughs) brand. So I'm just interested, what made you start your own accounting firm? What was that thing that made you uh, put yourself in that, in that capacity to work in this industry? Yeah. Well, first of all, I think I'm displaced. Um, If you read my book, I I should have always been in fashion or design and (laughs) my parents were not going for that. So I got into accounting. I was good at it. And um, I started my practice nine years ago because I found an underserved niche in the marketplace from um, my my previous firm that I had gone to um, when I got back into the workforce after being a stay-at-home mom for six years. And they had neglected the small business entrepreneurial sector. And um, I found that to be a, a, a gold mine. So um, my boss did me a favor five years after getting into that firm and um, told me that I wasn't where my peers were because I had that blip in my resume and uh, from being a stay-at-home mom, and I literally Jerry Maguired, um, mm-hmm. I, I made that a verb, you guys. Um, I Jerry Maguired out of my firm that day. I took my big client, my one big client with me, and I was like, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it better. And um, I just grew from there. And I was right. I was right on the money that this sector, the small business and entrepreneur, entrepreneurial solopreneur sector is highly underserved. And so... Um, that was my, that was my purpose. You know, when he told me I wasn't good enough to, to move forward in the firm, I said, I'm out of here. And, um, I've made more money than he told me I would nine years ago. So, um, I hope he, he hears this (laughs) (laughs) So for you. (laughs) Well, and again, you know, and, and just thinking about the things that you do to tell that story, right. And other mediums, like I said, through your book and through your podcast, it's so inspirational to hear, uh, the things that you do to really rally and support and champion behind other, not just solopreneurs, uh, and, and small business owners, but especially women solopreneurs and entrepreneurs and really just helping them, uh, get, a good foundation underneath of them, especially when it comes to these numbers, because let's face it. I mean, we might be good at what we do and I'm speaking for myself. Um, you know, I'm getting better at learning the numbers, right? Because I am a business owner now, but I, I got to tell you that I didn't do, I didn't run a business because of that. I was scared of the numbers. And I feel like a lot of our listeners today, if you're scared of those things, you know, challenge yourself in different ways to align yourself with rock stars like Nisha who are supporting and rallying and championing for uh, solo entrepreneurs and business owners like you uh, to help them sort that stuff out. So Nisha, again, I'm super grateful that you're here today. And I know we're going to listen and hear some other pearls of wisdom as we dive into this conversation today. So you are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Andy, my next question is for you. Girlfriend, I haven't known you very long. I mean, I think of all of us, I think I've known you the least amount of time, but in the short amount of time that I've known you, you are super active in your community. And I know on top of that, you're also a busy mom and you're a busy business owner. So how do you navigate all of those roles and still put yourself out there in terms of brand awareness and and, and putting all of that stuff out there so people can find you and work with you? Well, I feel like one of the things that is really positive for your brand is finding something that you're passionate about, whether it be something in your community, a charity, something that's just very meaningful to you. And then connect that to your brand because like Tracy was saying, people want to do business with people who they trust. And when you are putting yourself in a position that you are also helping different organizations within your community, that automatically builds up a brand trust. Plus, it's just a feel good factor. You feel good when you're doing something for your community or you're doing something for an organization that you know can use some help. And especially right now with everything going on, our, our charities and our community are suffering. 
they have, of course, had to cancel all of their events and their big fundraisers, and they could use help from talented people who have skill sets and who have things that they're capable of doing that can benefit their organization. So I think it's a win-win. Mm -hmm, for sure, for sure. And, you know, you are leveraging your efforts when you are getting involved with the community because there are decision makers within those nonprofit organizations or some of those other community associations. And so I find that, you know, when, when somebody's trying to get the in inside of their, whether it's a local market or the regional market, or maybe they're trying to expand beyond those markets, um, you know, it's sometimes just tethering yourself to a nonprofit organization, not with the intention that you're going to gain a bunch of business from it. That's the only caveat I'm going to throw sure. into this mix. But, um, but for our listeners who are thinking about that strategy, it is super smart because you are meeting the people that are already passionate about that thing that that nonprofit or that uh, organization that you're passionate about. So you already have that commonality. And then with the business stuff, it's just a matter of time before that gets w woven into the conversation, or at least people start recognizing you for what you do and how you show up in the marketplace. So I'm eager to dive into your discussion points further in this conversation today. So again, thank you for being here. Absolutely. Now, Tracy Tracy, I'm going to circle this conversation back to you, my friend. And this is actually one of my favorite questions because uh, there's, there's two sides of podcasting. Maybe you, you could probably break it down to even more because you know all things related to podcasting. But in my world, I feel like that there's two sides of it. Obviously, the host side and then the guest side of things. So could you talk a little bit about the effectiveness of guest podcasting versus hosting a podcast for creating awareness? Well, you know, when you're building a brand, um, it is always better to be the host, right? You want to own the audience at the end of the day because you want to sell them something. You want to en enroll them in something, whether it's a mission or a uh, social good program, or it is just your business goals, right? And so we think about that. That's hosting side of things. But so many people think, oh, well, I'll just go guesting and I'll go use other people's audiences, right? That just sounds like the logical thing and easy thing to do. But the problem with that is, is that they, um, there isn't quite that even exchange. So if you're not doing it smartly, if you're not out there doing a matched audience idea, if you're just going out there and saying, wow, this show is the most popular show, so I want to be on that show, but the show is all for you know, that some of the most popular shows is like the Joe Rogan experience. Like I would never be a good guest on Joe Rogan experience, right? <laughs> First off, he and I would probably get into a massive argument, which would do really great with his audience, <laughs> but not really draw anyone to me, right? So the, we want to think about that as like, how do we really match it up? And this is a challenge because you don't really know, is this a successful show? Who's their audience? You have no idea. Sometimes they have no idea. Um, because all the information is controlled by iTunes or Spotify or iHeartRadio or any of those platforms. So they don't even always have an idea of who their audience really is. And so that's where go guesting can, it sounds really good. It looks really great when on your press page, but it doesn't always translate into book sales or into business uh, leads. And so if that's what our goal, we want to be the host because we always think about it like this. Who's more important when there's an interview going on? Oprah or whoever she's interviewing, no matter how big a celebrity they are, even if she's interviewing uh, President Obama, right? Who's mm -hmm. more important? She's more important at the end of the day because her audience is there because she attracts them. And so that's where we ultimately want to put ourselves in. Now, guessing is a great way to lead into that. But at the end of the day, the hosting is where the brand power is. Yeah. And I think that there's certainly ways that you can be artful about the guesting opportunities, right? But there's a whole other set of strategy that goes into that play. And so um, regardless of our listeners today are thinking about, especially if they're wanting to evolve their brand and thinking about which way to go, you know, weighing those, those uh, doing almost like a for lack of a better term, a pros and cons list for your own unique situation. And then partnering with somebody like uh, Tracy and her husband, Tom at Potatize to figure out what's your next best step. And a lot of times people think it's an overwhelming commitment. And yes, it is because it is, it is making sure that you are creating consistent content. But again, partnering with somebody like a Tracy and Tom out there who are doing a lot of um, some of the heavy lifting on podcasting can certainly help support you in your goals. Tracy, do you right. have something you want 
wanted to chime in. Yeah, just just that it's strategy that matters. You know, the one size fits all, uh, like, let me follow a course and do it exactly. And so many people have gone out there and done the Joe Rogan show. And what happens is, is that that doesn't work anymore because today we're in a we cycle of business. So we are looking at how can we be more community focused, more outward focused, more focused on what the listeners desires needs are. And so in that we need a different strategy. We don't need a show that says, Hey, it's all about me today. Absolutely. And so strategy matters in there and it matters whether you're guesting or hosting. So yeah, thank you for bringing that up, Erica. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So consider that before you consider anything else for sure. So Nisha, my next question is for you, my friend. So uh, what are you most passionate about in your work today and how does that translate into how you create your own brand awareness? Yeah. So, you know, to, to sort of piggyback off what Tracy said earlier in the show about service, um, For me, I'm all about empowering the small business owner and entrepreneur on their financials um, because there's such a need. And I feel like uh, the financial statements and understanding your financials, it does hold people back from growing their business or expanding and because they don't understand it. And one of the things I found through COVID, um, a complete byproduct of what I was intending was when the PPP and the EIDL and all the CARES Act information was coming out, I just set out to just share information. And I didn't care who was my client or not my client. Um, I put it out in all my social media forms. I um, found that a lot of client uh, friends, CPAs were ghosting them or they didn't have time for them. So I set out on this mission of just sharing, 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 sharing everything I could learn, which was daily. And a byproduct of that was I picked up all these new clients. I got onto different media uh, platforms on TV and magazines to talk about it. And um, just, just by being of service, just by sharing information. And I became an expert unbeknownst to me of um, disseminating all of that information during COVID. So, you know, I'm passionate about just sharing um, empowering financial information. And that's, that's why I got into what I did because I know it like the back of my hand and I want other people to feel just as confident because it is an important part of running a business. And it's important and it's confusing, right? At the same time. And Very. so, so you, when I saw you really step into the, to the spotlight as it relates to sharing that information and, and something that nobody could seem to, even, even at times it seemed like, is the government even figuring this out? Right. I mean, you know, I'm joking, of course. Every but it, day it was daily. Yeah. It was every day, something new. And, but every day, Nisha, there she was on my social media feeds, pulling up saying, okay, you know, there's been some new changes, but here's how this rolls and here's how it affects people. So it's incidentally, it's, it's taking, and I, and I said this in another conversation earlier this week, it's like there, there are opportunities amongst COVID-19 and, and, and what we're experiencing and all the, the, the travesties that we're experiencing right now in 2020. There are plenty of opportunities. We just have to be willing to say, okay, where are those gaps? Being willing to draw in and say, okay, I'm not going to take advantage of situations, but if I can show up and serve... I perhaps maybe could open up another market in something that wasn't even relevant five months ago as we're recording this since June of 2020. But, you know, five months ago, did anybody think that, you know, people would be selling blinged out masks? My yoga company, the where I get yoga gear, they've got like this rainbow iridescent visor. I'm like, I need that. (laughs) But I never thought I would need that five months ago. And now they're selling them for 70 bucks and I need all this. I'm not going to go get one. That would be silly. But to that point, going back and I digress, just being a value and really showing up and serving and supporting is another way to extend that brand awareness, but also taking something that's very complex and putting into simple terms. It is a, a lifesaver for people out there that need it. And they will go to you um, because you were able to do that. So Nisha, thanks for sharing that. And thanks for all the work that you did to really uh, unravel <laughs> such a difficult Thank topic. You. You're welcome. And I know you're still unraveling it on some level. So, <laughs> yeah. so thank yeah. you for that. We're going to turn my next question over to sweet Andy. So Andy, oh, this is a COVID-19 related question. And I know obviously with, um, with everything that's happening right now, with not only just COVID-19, but then also with the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, what have you done specifically to support your community at large? 
Sure. So one of the projects that I recently created, I called Portraits for Progress. And what I decided was that I have the opportunity as a photographer to creatively allow people who I know, clients, prospective clients, people who I don't know at all, the, the ability to share their thoughts, their fears, their anger, their struggles, and their hope for the future in a creative project, like I said, that I called Portraits for Progress. So I invited, I just, I kind of opened up the doors to my studio. It, of course, very COVID friendly where we cleaned everything and we all stayed a bit of a distance from each other. But I invited people to come in and hold up a sign or a message or a memo where they had the ability to share their thoughts. And then collectively, I put all of those images together to create a, a, what I think has turned into a really powerful slideshow um, of, of people's emotions, given the current climate that we're dealing with. And it was so amazing and so impressive to me because I had people from all different ethnicities, backgrounds, sexual orientations, um, just all walks of life who came to support our community. And, and one of the things that I really tried to drive home is we are, what we are wanting to do in, in this project is show our support of the black community. And in doing so, we aren't saying, and, and I don't wanna turn this into a political thing by any means, but, but what we're saying is that this is a platform so that you can show your support for a community. And by showing your support for that community, you're not downplaying anybody else. Mm. If that makes sense. No, it totally makes sense. But I think, you know, again, it's just taking a, 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 a situation that a current event in our world right now, and instead of running away from it, you know, finding a way to not capitalize on it, right? right. But just but shedding some light, it. but leaning into it and having an artful discussion and doing it in a, in a thoughtful and compelling and a meaningful way. And so sometimes just looking at um, those opportunities to, again, not capitalize on it, not necessarily turn it into something that, you know, is going to be uh, perceived as um, an opportunistic kind of a thing, but just saying, you know what, like, what is it that I can do to add value to the conversation, to lean into it, to show support, and then, uh, you know, really just, um, and if it, if it happens to uh, add some ad additional uh, recognition to the things that you're doing, then that's a beautiful byproduct. But I love the way that you were able to uh, bring that, both of those instances where, you know, you were doing the, the front porch portraits, and then obviously with the Portraits for Change um, initiative, just both of those things really were executed beautifully. And I'm so Thank excited you. for all the things that you were able to accomplish with those initiatives. So you rock, sister. Thank you. You're welcome. So we're going to turn our question back over to question round of questions, I should say, back over to Tracy. So you work with your husband and your daughter every single day. <laughs> and, um, and it's so cool how you work with both of them. And so how does this contribute to or take away from uh, loving what you do? Well, you know, I did this before the pandemic. So for those of you who are being thrown <laughs> into this situation, um, I might have some coping tips. No, um, no. You know, the thing is, is that I've worked on and off with my husband for 28 years. Um, and that's, we've been married 28 and a half. So there you go. And it, it's been a joy. It is the reason I love what I do every day. We are creatives. And at the end of the day, our brain doesn't just shut off, Right. And for us to be able to have melded that into our lifestyle and that we're here supporting each other, growing each other, believing in each other, having each other's backs is a beautiful thing because you, being a solo in a business is really, really hard. And I've done that too. Um, but when somebody, when you've got a great partner who's not just in it for where the business is going and what that is happening, but it's in it for the lifestyle and the way you want to live and the way you want to grow, that's beautifully brilliant. Now- Add into the mix, though, a daughter. So my <laughs> my 25-year-old daughter is our COO. Um, and, she, you know, she's responsible for the growth of our team from, from 12 people to 60 people. So she's massively responsible for all the processes, the systems, and everything that went into the hiring the right people to hire the right people. Like all of that went through that, that she's responsible for that. She was like adding a second me. And that was just absolutely amazing. But it does put a strain on the, on the mother-daughter relationship mm -hmm. um, because she's young, right? She hasn't had a lot of work experience. And when your first work experience is your mom's company or your dad's company, right? You come into this world thinking like, 
why, why are they right about anything? Right. And so you have a lot of conflict. So you do have to learn how to like accept that and work that through. And that can make for some trying days. So that I think has been the biggest difficulty for us in the, in the scope of things. But Tom and I, you know, 28 years of doing this, we've come to a system by which we, we really, you know, we might argue in the office and we might disagree about something, but we leave it right there because we, we know it's not a fundamental thing. You argue with your 25 year old and they take it as a, you you just criticize them fundamentally. So we have, you know, you have to learn different communication skills over time in order to keep loving what you do. Yeah, but but I, I, it's a big joy because we're all in it together. We're building something really big and then we're excited about it together. And that, that's amazing. Yeah. And it's so, it's so unique to have that situation, right? Where you have um, everybody within the family that is really excited about moving in the right direction. And I think at the end of the day, if you can all keep that perspective, um, you know, it does make things a little easier, but again, it's just w um, ebbing and flowing the different communication styles to make that work. And congratulations on, on, <laughs> on the team growth, because I, the, the evolution of the growth of, uh, you know, just the things that you've been able to bring to the table, you and Tom alone and now bringing in uh, your sweet daughter, but then being able to grow the team in the way that you have is just super impressive. So congratulations on all that growth. You're welcome. My next question is for Miss Nisha. So you, my friend, um, are the queen, the quintessential queen, since I've known you just for, again, for this short amount of time, there's no doubt in my mind that anybody could talk to you and not know that you are super passionate about women. So uh, you're passionate about making sure that they are on the rise and doing the things that they need to do to achieve success. So let's talk about some of the ways uh, that you help other women rise and within not only the CPA profession, but even outside of the scope of the CPA profession. Yeah. So, you know, I grew up feeling, I feel feeling lonely, especially in a man's a male dominated profession uh, and here in the South. And um, sadly to say, I never had a mentor. I never had a mentor in college. I never had a mentor in, in my career early on. And um, had I had a mentor, I think that my life could have been different in my profession, but um, obviously things happen the way they did. And, and I love what I do now and who I am, but because I didn't have a mentor, I felt like I needed to be a mentor when I got out here. And, um, because I feel that in my faith, uh, in my faith, I am here where I am because of God and I want to pay, I want to pay it forward. So, um, it is my mission to help younger women, I employ stay-at-home moms. Um, my entire team is women um, because we wear so many different hats and we do so many different things. And um, I felt the void of not having a mentor in my life. And so I want to be a mentor to others. And being a mentor is just one of the ways um, that I want to be a uh, servant leader. And so I enjoy it. I love it. And um, I'm giving back in a way that I missed out on um, in my earlier years. And, um, you know, women, girls will run the world. I do believe that. Mm. Yeah. And your whole perspective of really empowering uh, women in a, in a, in a situation that, you know, that you could have easily been salty about, right? Like I didn't get that. <laughs> I didn't get that in my early career. And so forget it. Nobody gets it, right? But taking into perspective that the only way that we are going to um, grow and the only way that uh, like our society is going to evolve is if we do, uh, to Sarah Benkin's words, and the and part of the No Tribe is, you know, lift and rising other people Absolutely. through the process. And just Absolutely. sticking together and um, not being stingy with the things that we know, but just saying, you know, and not giving the farm away either. You know, we definitely want to make sure that, you know, we're, especially if we're in a capacity of, for our coaches, or trainers that are listening to this podcast right now. There's no expectation to go out there and give away the farm, but there is opportunity. There are opportunities, I should say, to uh, show up, be that servant leader, like Nisha said. Um, and then, you know, that is what I think at the end of the day, our legacy is going to stand for, right? In, in terms of the brand awareness game, let's face it, <laughs> we're building legacy here. If we're spending all of this time working on expanding our brand, brand awareness, on some level, we're thinking about the ultimate legacy goals. And so that's, at the end of the day, I think that's super vital and super important. So thank you for that remark, Nisha. I appreciate it. Thank Andy, you. for you, what, could, what is it that you do to empower the women in your world? 
So I have a, a, a private Facebook group. It's called ADP Diamond Girls. And it's been pretty awesome seeing it grow because it's just shown me that women really do want to be a part of a tribe where they are supporting other women. And I feel like it kind of goes back to that whole everything we learned, we learned in kindergarten, you know, where, where you, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything at all. So in, in my group, it's all about just helping women feel good about themselves, helping women feel supported, um, helping give advice or ideas if, if a woman needs uh, some, some suggestions. So in my, in my career, I do that through personal branding portraits and through boudoir portraits. So just to talk about boudoir portraits for a minute, you don't have to be 22 years old and a size zero to do boudoir portraits. And I feel like that's something that just society in a whole, as a whole, and of course through social media, we have these ideas in our head or we were taught these ideas in our head of what, what beautiful is. And it's, it's, it's not true. <laughs> I mean, some of it may be true, but also what's to say that somebody in her 40s, 50s, 70s can't feel beautiful and sexy and confident in her own skin. And so I love helping women of all ages and sizes and shapes and colors to feel beautiful, to feel confident. And if, if a boudoir session is the route that they want to take to feel that kind of confidence for themselves, then I love to be able to help them reach that goal. And it's, it's fun. It's, it's really fun. So I love helping women to just feel good about themselves. And like I said, feel really good about the skin that they're in wherever they are in, in their personal journey. Yeah. And, and obviously that shows in the work that you do and it shows up in um, the other projects that you align with too. And again, going back to uh, just the, what does it truly mean to, um, you know, define branding and defining what that means for you, you found a niche and you found an opportunity to really hone in on uh, tapping into the beauty, right? And, and wherever that lies uh, for so many of us, because that is subjective. And so totally. you know, mm -hmm. and making people feel empowered and, and having a brand that really like essentially uh like puts puts you know wraps it up and puts a bow on it right it's super empowering within itself so congratulations on all that success as well too you are a superstar oh thanks you're welcome so with that said ladies I cannot believe that we are almost out of time. It is crazy how fast our time goes on these episodes. So with that said, before we wrap it up for our audience today, I did have a final question for you. And I wanted to make sure that I asked the same question of each of you, because um, I feel like this is something that our listeners are going to really uh, learn a lot in this short question that I have for you. And so my question is, what book or what podcast or what other resource that are, that are you're con currently consuming or something that you've consumed in the past that is either currently moving the needle or something that has changed the game as it relates to your business or life. So Tracy, I'm going to ask that question of you first. Well, you'd think for me, it'd be a podcast, but I <laughs> literally have to listen to podcasts. Uh, you know, my probably listen to five or six a week just for business, for evaluating them for my show. And so, you know, so that's, I, it's not my go-to for me to learn something <laughs> just because of that. Um, although it, at, a, at a certain time in life, it was. But so it, for me, I'm still a reader. I've always been a reader. I probably consume at least a book a week, maybe more. Um, and so right now I've been reading Dream Teams, which is Shane Snow, and he's one of my favorite writers. I follow his newsletter on LinkedIn, um, and he has a fabulous view on growing businesses, especially the businesses that have a tech edge. And so because we're about to go into a large capital uh, growth plan uh, later this year, I've been really trying to figure out how am I going to merge and acquire companies and, and build a team that's cohesive and collaborative and does all the things that I want the culture of my company to, to be. And this book has been really fabulous. And I've taken so many notes and highlighted so many sections of it and uh, keep taking, coming back to something that he said and, and researching more on that. So that's been probably the biggest one right uh, in the last few months for me. Awesome. Fantastic. And I'll be sure to have the link to that book that Tracy just shared inside of the show notes page of this episode. So Nisha, same question. Yeah, I have been listening to uh, the Play Big Movement podcast by Sharon Lecter. Sharon was the co-author of uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I met her at the No Tribe Conference last year. She lives out in Arizona uh, and is a No Sister. 
And um, she, her podcast is amazing because she is also a fellow CPA uh, and an entrepreneur, which is some, and an author, which is what I am and want to be and want to be more of. And um, she talks to a lot of um, entrepreneurs who have been successful. And, um, you know, I've learned a lot from listening to her episodes. Fantastic. And that is a great, a great episode for sure. Or a great podcast, I should say, not just an episode, but a podcast. And she is a wealth of information. So I will, again, be sure to share uh, where you can connect with Sharon Lefter and her podcast in the show notes of the episode. So uh, Andy, the same question for you, my friend. Yeah. So I'm probably the odd man out here because I tend to get a lot of my inspiration and a lot of my ideas from a couple different masterminds groups that I'm a part of. So I actually connect a lot with other photographers and we share a lot of information with each other. So that way we can help to push and motivate each other. And I, I just tend to, I think maybe I've got some adult ADD, but I tend to do better <laughs> when I am speaking directly to someone and I can pick their brain and they can do the same. So I tend to get a lot of great information from masterminds groups. And for anybody who's listening, if they have the opportunity to connect with other individuals within their industry, I highly recommend it. Mm, for sure. Yeah. Because you're, you know, not everybody, uh, especially if we're thinking about competition over collaboration, there's much more space in our world. If we're thinking about collaboration and looking at uh, people in our industry as peers versus um, somebody that sets competition. So, and you know, what works for somebody in one, I, I, I've, I've said this before and I'll say it again, and I'm sure I, I know I'm paraphrasing this from uh, other great mentors that I've heard this advice before, but the thing Things that you're struggling with right now as a business owner, as a leader, as an entrepreneur, as a woman in business, somebody else has already figured it out somewhere yeah. else. So you got to just open up your, uh, your, your eyes and your ears to other people that are talking about these things and align with them and find out those best practices. That's part of the reason why if you're still listening to this episode today, hopefully you're doing just that. You're immersing yourself in what Tracy and Nisha and Andy are sharing so you can be more productive as it relates to putting your brand out there in a more thoughtful and compelling way. So with that said, ladies, before we wrap it up for today, Tracy, where can people stay connected with you outside of the space of this interview today? Well, I have multiple podcasts, so they can look my name up, Tracy Hazard with two Zs, and any podcast player in the one that they're using right now, and they'll be able to find that. We have the Binge Factor, Feed Your Brand, Product Launch Hazards, the New Trust Economy. So there's a ton out there. Um, but the best place, if you want to catch me personally, is to go to LinkedIn. Awesome. Fantastic. And Nisha, what about for you? Nisha, you're on mute. So sorry. Um, <laughs> you can follow me at, at Nisha Pai, N-E-S-H-A-P-A-I on Instagram. And from there, you can link to my other uh, businesses and such. Awesome. Fantastic. And then Andy, what about for you? Where can people stay connected with you outside of the space of this interview today? So the best way would be through social media, either through Instagram or Facebook. And it's Andy with an I, A-N-D-I, Diamond. Awesome. And like I said, I will have all the links to where you can connect with Tracy, Nisha, and Andy inside of the show notes page of this podcast episode. Ladies, I cannot thank you enough for carving out time to be on the on this awesome episode today of the Love the Work You Do podcast. You rock, my friends. See, what did I tell you? That was a golden episode. Oh my goodness. So many amazing nuggets shared during my conversation with Tracy, Nisha, and Andy. So so if you want access to not only the show notes, but also the resources that our three fabulous leaders and guests left for you all today to go digest, to consume, to uh, take your business and life to that next level of awesomeness, I highly recommend you head on over to the show notes page over at ericacastner.com forward slash 35. That's ericacastner.com forward slash 35. And if you have a specific takeaway, something that was a big aha moment for you that you gained from listening to this episode today, then head on over to Apple Podcast and leave a quick review on what your biggest takeaway was from this specific episode. Not only will I appreciate reading it because I read every single one of those reviews, 
our wonderful guests are certainly going to want to hear from you as it relates to what you found valuable in this episode. And I could read your review on a future episode. So I could uh, certainly give you a shout out in the near future right here on the Love the Work You Do podcast by simply heading on over to Apple Podcasts, subscribing to the show, and leaving me a review about your biggest takeaway from this very episode today. So with that said, we're going to wrap it up today, my friends. I'm looking forward to connecting with you again on a future episode of the Love the Work You Do podcast. Remember, you will have what it takes to go out there and accomplish big things as it relates to taking your influence, your income and impact to that next level of awesomeness. And we certainly encourage you to utilize the Love the Work You Do podcast as a platform to continue to develop and grow your brand awareness. So you rock, have a fantastic rest of your day, and we'll talk again soon. Take care.